Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. I'm Brian Strauser, Principal and Chief Executive here at BrightPath. And this week for episode 210, we're doing something different. For the first time, I'm simultaneously recording both audio and video, and you can continue to listen to our podcast as you have before, uh, you know, through your favorite podcast uh, tool or on our website at brightpath.com. But you can now also watch a video version of the podcast on YouTube. And you may even see some snippets of this podcast on YouTube and Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok as reels uh, or shorts, kind of reinforcing some of the key messages uh, that I'm covering here in our podcast. In this episode, episode 210, I've got a simple message. And that is as resilience professionals that we are here to support the business. We're here to support the business's strategic objectives. And we forget that sometimes. I was reminded of this because I started my career in retail assets protection or retail loss prevention almost 30 years ago in central Indiana where I was a store security officer and then a store security manager for a major Fortune 30 retailer. And I remember vividly, we had this individual who kept coming into the store and she was clearly doing fraudulent refunds, right? She, back then there weren't really refund databases or things that you have today that kind of cut this activity off. And what my team and I found is that she was signing multiple different names. And I was like, ah, Well, I'd worked in law enforcement. I knew that this was a violation of the Indiana Criminal Code. And just proud as I could be, I called my boss and I'm like, we got her. She's forging someone else's signature. She's committing fraud by doing this in multiple ways, using multiple names in these refunds. And as I told my boss this, there's this long silence on the phone. And he's like, Brian, I understand your enthusiasm. I understand what it is that you're trying to go after. But she's not really causing a significant amount of loss here. And you're approaching this as a cop. You're thinking about this as a law enforcement officer who has caught someone committing a crime. When really what we're trying to do here is to protect the store, protect the people that are in it, and make sure that we're able to support the organization's objectives, which have nothing to do with putting people in jail for forgery or fraud. And there, there may have actually been some valid reasons that she was doing what she was doing. We never really found out. And I was mad. I was, I was pissed off. But after time, I started to think about it. And I was like, you know, he was right. My job here is to support the business's objectives, not try to put people in jail for committing forgery or fraud. That lesson has always stuck with me. Because in the resilience professions of business continuity and crisis management, That's our role, is to support the business. It's the business that makes money. And our role in resilience, in business continuity or crisis management, is to help them achieve that mission by preparing them and preparing the business to deal with disruptions. As a consultant, I often see resilience leaders struggling with this issue. They struggle to understand that often the obstacle they run into with their business continuity or crisis management programs, where they're struggling to get commitment to the program, is simply because their program is not at all aligned well, not not aligned well to the needs of the business. So if you're running into obstacles with your program, you're running into issues of commitment with your business teams, and you find yourself having to fall back on a compliance approach I have usually found that the problem is the mindset in which you've structured your program. You have fallen back on a commitment approach. You've fallen back on a compliance approach, rather, because you've been unable to gain commitment. And the underlying reason for that is that your program is not well aligned to what your business needs. A few months ago, for example, I was sitting in an after action meeting with one of our clients. We hadn't yet been retained to help them rebuild or build a better business continuity uh, crisis management or resilience program. But we were there because we were in these initial negotiation conversations and they asked if we could sit in the after action discussion around a recent business continuity incident. And one of the things I heard in this after action review, which where I was really just a fly on the wall listening to the current state of affairs, they had had a situation where they had to relocate a critical capability Uh, due to a local utility problem. 
So it wasn't emergent that they had to immediately like evacuate and take emergency action. They had a little bit of time to relocate this important function that ran 24-7 to another building 20 or 30 minutes away. And I heard on the call that they didn't have a business continuity plan for this clearly critical capability. And so I chimed in and said, well, why? Well, we don't really like the business continuity plans because they're long and they're unwieldy and they're difficult to maintain. And in an emergency, they're not usable. So instead, we have this checklist that's a page and a half. And I, and as I had already heard in the conversation, they didn't use the checklist either. So what I learned here, what I took, my major takeaway from this conversation is the way their program approached business continuity planning was not at all around the actual needs of the business. It was a compliance or check the box activity. It was an academic exercise in planning rather than building plans that could actually be used in a crisis as this organization had now experienced and didn't handle well because they weren't well prepared. And there were a whole host of issues related to that. Now, they need, do they need a business continuity plan? They absolutely did. Do they need to practice that plan? They absolutely did. But the leadership, the business leadership, didn't believe in their business continuity plans because of the, what their previous experience had been. Because what they had was not well aligned to what their actual needs were. In this post-COVID era, if we want to call that where we are now in the you know near fall of 2023, your business more than ever is looking for you to lead. They're looking for the resilience leader to help the organization be better prepared for that next crisis. If you take nothing else away from today's episode, I want you to really think honestly about your program and ensure that your program is structured to align with and support the direction that your business is going and where they are today. That is the best way to ensure that you get the commitment of your business leaders, that you get the resources and the funding and the headcount and the software and the capabilities that you need. And then you will not have to use compliance in order to achieve your objectives. That's it for this edition of the Managing Uncertainty Podcast. We'll be back next week with another new episode. Be well. Thanks for watching our video. To learn more about how to manage uncertainty and disruption in your organization, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe to our video channel. And here are a few more videos that we've selected that will help you learn more about business continuity, crisis management, and crisis communications.